Hey there YouTube, this is going to be a response to Dorian Vigor Death, who recently did a video exploring the uh, the nature and the application of stereotypes. Now, stereotypes are an interesting thing because they tell us their existence and our reliance upon them tells us a lot about our species and our, our inherent limitations, our, the limitations that are defined by our biology. Um, stereotypes are ultimately um, a holdover from our evolutionary history. They demonstrate a particular biological weakness in our species, and that is our proclivities as pattern-seeking entities. Um, stereotypes are formulated based upon certain consistent experiences of particular peoples or presumptions of those experiences, the way that people commonly interpret particular experiences, or the way, the, the particular characteristics that people identify and then use as markers for particular tribes that generally tend to stand outside of their own. They serve as ways for us to digest reality, ultimately. They synthesize reality down into digestible chunks because we can filter it through a net of presumptions and expectations. Unfortunately, those presumptions and expectations become self-sustaining. They become integrated into the ways by which we perceive and experience reality, and also into the constructs of personality. And as a result, they become things that sustain themselves rather than reflecting what we actually experience. We begin to filter reality and our experience of other human beings through this net of expectations and presumptions. And even when we come across things that defeat those expectations and presumptions, we tend to ignore the factors that stand outside of them. So stereotypes, although they may have some truth in them, although there may be certain consistent characteristics that apply to a particular group or tribe or whatever, or rather there may be particular characteristics that we perceive, uh, that we presume are consistent to a particular tribe or a particular group of people or whatever, they very, very rarely tell you anything about external reality and tell you a hell of a lot more about your own internal landscape. Um, stereotypes also function on a culture-wide level. They are means by which culture defends itself against um, newly arising elements that it preconceived as damaging or which may be corrosive to certain socio-cultural norms. A really good example I can think of are the punks or the goths. Uh, both the punk and the goth movements when they came about were movements that def pardon me, defined themselves by their rejection of particular socio-cultural norms. But what, how does culture react to that? Initially it reacts with fear and with derision it creates uh, mechanisms by which these uh, subcultures can be contained, by which they can be derided. It attempts to stamp them out initially. Um, most people don't really understand when they are acting as part of these mechanisms. They just react. They will react on the basis of moral principles or um, with regards to some notion of um, how society should be and how people should react in it. When that fails, and it inevitably does, because most of these groups actually are quite harmless in and of themselves, it's usually some incidental characteristic, like for, with regards to the punks, it was usually the way they looked. Same with the goths, rather than the way they acted, that was focused on. Um, when this fails, culture creates stereotypes. It sprouts with uh, stereotypes, which are means by which 
the group in question can become normal normalized through caricature. You see it in soaps all the fucking time. Soaps are insidious parts of these mechanisms. They really fucking are. And uh, I hate fuck, I hate soaps. You can see my video why I hate soaps to for a full explanation as to why. But soaps have this insi and popular media in general really have this very insidious proclivity to reinforce pervasive socio-cultural narrative or norms How, uh, uh, establishing and communicating how people should act, how people should be, what they should aspire to. That's what these popular mediums do. And when you get these subcultures, soaps and media like them will be the very first to create the caricatures around them. Which ultimately serve to normalise uh, the subcultures and to ultimately new to them they take away whatever corrosive capacity they might have because the stereotype then becomes the norm it becomes the perception of normality you can see it in ethnic stereotypes in soaps you can see it at work particularly for me as a, a gay man I'm very well aware of the stereotypes that exist um, the way culture has attempted to normalize homosexuality and to make it uh, a sort of trivial thing, something that is um, incidental, is by creating very particular stereotypes of it. And those stereotypes tend to be um, very specific. There are two. There is the flaming, incredibly effeminate, lisping, camp um, cartoon character, which is very common in soaps these days, which is an example of the safe homosexual because you can identify them because they conform to particular prescriptions of what homosexuality homosexuality should be and then you have the other one who doesn't tend to conform to this stereotype but is incredibly tormented and emotionally tortured and tends to um, be at odds with their own sexuality and who in soaps certainly have this nasty tendency to hurt a lot of people around them, to um, destroy relationships, and then to bugger off. They disappear, they leave, because they are part of the tribe, ultimately. That's what this reflects. It's the cultural narrative saying, no, you do not conform. You do not um, function as part of what our narratives say you should. Therefore, you go, you're out. This is what stereotypes are. This is how they function, insofar as I can see. Um, with regards to particular subcultures here on YouTube, uh, the Transformers collecting community, the wargaming communities, the I suppose those subcultures that concern themselves with interests that are regarded as outside of mainstream, so comic book collectors, uh, figurine painters, that sort of thing, there are, again, very, very particular and very shallow stereotypes that any casual or cursory examination of YouTube, YouTube is a really good example, will show you to be utterly untrue. Or rather, not utterly untrue, but rather not universally applicable. Are there people who do conform to these stereotypes, to the parameters of behaviour? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely there are. But it's a trap to say that because there are people who conform to particular pervasive stereotypes, that that stereotype is true. It's not. It is. These things are not universally applicable. Um, rather, it would be much more productive if, as a species and as cultures, we could learn. We could learn to transgress or transcend beyond the parameters of our biological limitations, of our old evolutionary history, of our tribalism, and start to take people as individuals. We determine their nature and their significance as individuals based upon what they profess and how they act and so on and so forth, rather than attempting to prejudge or to apply these um, expectations and presumptions, which ultimately, when you start getting down to the nitty-gritty, even those who seem to conform to them ultimately will have characteristics that stand outside of them. 
because that's the nature of humanity. We are species in and of ourselves. We are not, no matter how much we try to make ourselves, or no matter how much we preconceive ourselves of being so, we're not tribes. We're not part of tribes. Every single person who identifies as part of a tribe um, will demonstrate beliefs or characteristics or thoughts that are outside the norms of that tribe. This is something that, um, taking it further, that people who belong to very particular, say, religious or political tribes don't understand. They don't, or rather, they refuse to accept it because it's terrifying. It frightens them that they are ultimately alone in their own skulls, that they are a species of one, and they have to deal with this. That's where the fear reaction comes from. That's where the, the hostile tribalism comes from, comes from. And it's ultimately where negative stereotypes come from. <laughs> So that's my, my two penneth worth, rambling, wordy, and probably nonsensical, but I hope that something comes out of it. <laughs>